Now, Lord, it is your time, never mine. Let me decrease as you increase. So God, I ask you to enlighten our minds, soften our hearts and unite us that we, your people, might speak out against sin, against war, against hatred. That we might be people who are praying hard for the people in Europe and Ukraine. We might be praying hard for the people in our own country. That we might be praying hard for the people all over the world that it will get better. And we trust you, oh God, we put our trust in you. In your holy name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. The sermon for this blessed morning, holy living, resisting temptation. One of my favorite playwrights is August Wilson. And in one of my favorite plays is Fences. The main character, Troy, is a Negro League baseball player who is disillusioned because he's got the gifts to go and play in the big leagues, but segregation stops him. As a young man, he uh, kills a person in the process of robbing uh, somebody and spends time in jail. But the play begins with him in a stable marriage with a blue collar wife. He's a uh, uh, one of the first garbage worker drivers in Pittsburgh. And so he has things going on. He has a good friend named Bono who helps him to stay on the straight, stay on the straight and narrow. But like all of us, he's tempted. He's tempted by a beautiful woman outside of his marriage. And, and he keeps saying, thinking, with my wife at home, we got to talk about bills and worries, but this woman, we, I, I can have fun with her. That's what he tells his own wife, Rose. And Rose says, I've been standing by your side, Troy, all this time. And I think Troy deals, is not able, he's unable to deal with temptation for the same reason many of us are. We, we move away, our friends and even the persons we love dear, if we move away from Christ, if we move in another direction, it's easy to slip up. In the text that was read so beautifully, the text, the Luke, Luke text talks about that 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. They think about it. it it's symbolic for all of us that this Lenten season is a time of art a time of getting our body, getting our souls and minds and hearts ready for what's to come, for the Easter tide season, of time of being spiritually and mentally prepared, a time of letting go, a time of not, not being consumed by all the things that have normally consumed us. And we see Jesus, the powerful point in this text is, no matter where you go, the devil is there. No matter where you go, there will be temptation. You know, you, you, you run a cottage and you go off to, to meditate and pray and the devil's already there with his house slippers on. He's sipping good scotch and smoking a cigar waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get to influence you. And if you don't bring Jesus to where you're going, you already lost the battle. But what he knows, but what, 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 what Jesus knows in dealing with the devil is the devil the devil will test your physical limitations. Here, you're hungry. Man, I got collard greens. I got, I got cornbread. I got chicken. I got, I got cake. I got uh, German chocolate cake. Here, Jesus, eat. And Jesus says, man, can't, you, you giving me physical food. I'm just not worried about that. Then he deals with his ego. All this I'll give you. Materialism, the world is dealing with now. All this stuff you can have. All this stuff, the devil makes this promise. You can have all this stuff if you follow me. Have all this stuff if you use the same techniques I used to get it. You can lie still, cheat, rob people, whatever. And, God, and Jesus is not fooled. Then it says, you got all this power, throw yourself off and let, let angels come and get you. And finally, the devil understands and knows that Jesus is not going to be moved that day, and he goes on to fool with somebody else. As the devil fools with you, does he know? Does he understand and know that you are ready, that even in your own willingness, you have memory. 
even in your own wilderness, you remember the story of how you got from A to Z. Does, do you remember that each trial and each tribulation, you were never alone? Do you understand and know that with God, anything is possible? You have that memory to understand and to know that even in your darkest moment, even in your wilderness, when you come out of the wilderness, when you, when you come out, you come out whole and better because you have tarried with God. You wrestle with your own consciousness, with your own sin, with your own evil. You have taken score of where your life has been. And you come out of the wilderness as a better, stronger person, fortified, because you have tarried with God, you have been with Jesus, and you know and understand that the devil is a small, he's small potatoes, small potatoes when he's compared to Jesus Christ. He doesn't have anything to give Jesus that Jesus doesn't already own. He doesn't have, any, he, he doesn't have any, any food any better than what Jesus can give us. He doesn't have any property any better. What the text tells us is that, yes, there will be times of temptation. How you, how you deal with, how you resist temptation is not up to you because alone, you can't resist the temptation. Alone, you can't resist the temptation of beautiful women or beautiful men or, or, or getting some ill-gained fortune. You can't resist that unless you are traveling with Jesus. And Jesus is the one who says to you, this is the way you ought to go. We live in a world we, where we justify, we really justify uh, 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 the bad we do, and we, we, we rationalize and make it good. It's okay to cheat somebody if they don't know any better. It's okay to put people in, in slum houses if, 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 if they can't do any better. It's okay to mistreat our seniors if they, nobody knows it. It is never okay to do the wrong thing. We are tempted so many times to, we're tempted to, we're tempted to cheat Jesus. Amen. He says, I need your time, Roger. I'm going fishing. Bears are biting. I need your time, Roger. Right, it's deer season, Lord. I need your time, something they got a sale on over there. A sale going on to JC Penney's, and I and I got two for one coupons. So tempted. I need you to feed the hungry. I'm hungry myself. I can't feed nobody else. My freezer just ain't full enough for me. I ain't got time to give nobody else anything. We're tempted to do so much wrong. But those who follow Jesus are able to hold their hands up to the sky and say, I ain't perfect. By no stretch of the imagination, I'm not perfect. And there are days when I think thoughts I ought not think. But at the end of the day, Lord, I'm going where you're going. At the end of the day, Lord, I am going to be on your side. At the end of the day, I will say, if you say do it, I'm going to do my best to do it. I'm not going to use any excuses. And I ain't going to get mad when somebody tells the truth about it. We get so angry when people challenge us about our, about our cheating Jesus. Get so mad. How dare that preacher talk like that to me? How dare that son of preacher used to talk like that? How dare my mama tell me to do my stuff? It's my stuff. But your stuff is never your stuff. All your stuff belongs and came from Jesus. And, and I, here's, a, here's a sidebar. All that stuff that you hold on to, somebody else going to have it. Don't worry about it. Somebody else going to have it whatever it is. But if we resist temptation, understand and know the devil comes at us from all sides, but if we journey and travel with him, life gets better. Gets better and better and better. I was a student pastor in North Georgia and became friends with a, a woman who had been a cook for the great singer, Roland Hayes. And she, that woman could make some chicken and dumplings and make you hurt yourself. She would call us over and, and, and feed us chicken and dump, chicken and dumplings, Cynthia and I, and talk to us about life. She got ready to do it was her her parting words to me as I came to visit her when she's dying. She, she, she shared this with me. She said, My husband worked for TVA. I never made a lot of money, but we've saved up quite a bit of money. 
I need, I'm telling you this, I'm not telling anybody else, and I don't need you to tell anybody else after I'm gone. I've left $50,000 with my nephew and $50,000 with my pastor. The checks are made out to them, but I gave them instructions on what to do with them. They have a choice. When I'm gone, they don't, they don't have to tell anybody that I told them anything. They can just take the money and, and spend it. She said, but I want you to make sure that you understand and know what they're doing with the money. I said, well, you, you really, Miss Mary, you won't know anyway. She said, yeah, but I just need you to, I just need you to, it's a lesson for them. It's a lesson for you. Make a long story short, the pastor did exactly what she told him to do with, with, with the $50,000 she gave him, who to give it to, what to do with it. The nephew wanted to do that, but he, he, he wanted to do right. But he had a gambling addiction. And, 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 and so at the end of about four months, he had lost every bit of that money to the same, to the same dice crap house. He lost that money. <sighs> that church received an anonymous $50,000 donation. $50,000. I know where it came from. The man who had cheated him out of that $50,000, the owner of the Dice House, gave the $50,000 he had cheated the kid out of to the church. Tell me, ain't God good? God is awesome. She knew the lessons that needed to be taught by the nephew, the integrity, integrity the preacher needed. And, and as, a, as, a, as a young pastor, what I needed to know about human nature and about temptation. You can't make this stuff up. The lessons God gives us are they out there. And we have to learn to appreciate it. There are people standing tall out there because they have said, I want to do what God wants me to do. I'm not perfect. I may never be a saint, but Lord, just give me some direction for this mission today. And I'm going to get it done. Lord, give me some direction for this mission day, I'm going to get it done because I follow a savior who gave every drop of his blood for me. I follow a savior that my mother knew and my grandmother knew and all my ancestors and I stand on the shoulders of ancestors who understand, who, who gave their blood, life's blood to vote for human rights, for dignity. I am somebody. My lineage, I come from a long line of those who held their hands up and said, I will resist temptation. I will do what you need me to do, God. And whatever the world is doing, no matter how crazy it gets out there, I'm going to do what you want me to do. No matter how materialistic the world gets, no matter how crazy the world gets, no matter how much commercialism is thrown at me, I'm going to stay steady, Lord. I'm going to keep on marching. I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on doing what you would have me to do. And though the world stands against me and all the people say I'm crazy and people are talking about me, as long as you hold my hand, Lord, as long as you lead me, as long as you guide me, as long as you send somebody that says I got your back, as long as you tell me there's somebody out there who says I love you on the same journey, I can make it, Lord. I can do it. Just believe that, Lord. Believe that I am able to do it. Because at the end of the day, I am stronger. Not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. And I know that every day is going to be a day of temptation. I know the devil is going to throw folk at you. I know the devil is going to put things in your way. But you know, I know. As long as I keep my eye on the prize, 
as long as I keep my direction pointed to the cross, then I can stand tall with around my God, around my King, and say today, Lord, this day is for me and my house. We are going to serve you. As for me and my family, we are going to serve you. And as I lift my hands to the sky and give thanks, oh God, for the rich and wonderful foods you put on my table, for the glorious roof you put over my head, for the car you allowed me to drive, where you allowed me to live, I give thanks to you, God, but I know that without you, none of this is possible. And I give you the credit. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you. And I say, Lord, when I get the, above my raising, bring me down, Lord. Don't let me fall too hard, but bring me down, Lord. When I get up too high and think more of myself than I ought to, bring me back down, Lord. But love me anyway. As we get ready, as Reverend Jones gets ready to lead us and guide us through this time of Holy Communion, let memory, let your memory remind you of what God has given to us. And let your memory remind us of the table that's set before us. And the joy we understand in knowing that God sent his son, he gave his life, he gave his blood, he gave everything for you and me. So we come to the table holy, filled with joy and passion and saying, no matter how crazy it gets in Ukraine, no matter how crazy it gets in Europe, no matter how crazy it gets in this world, God, you're going to make things right. We don't know what day or what time, but God, you got this. We, we, we know that they're bombing and killing innocent babies and children and doing all kinds of crazy things, but Putin is not a God. You are the God who's able. All of the crazy dictators and rulers of the world, they will come to an end, but your reign of love will always be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Lord, in the midst of so much bullets flying, here, there, and everywhere, hatred, malice, mischief, violence, in the midst of all of that, there's a glow of love around your entire world, oh God, every continent, that says this is going to be okay. This is people stand tall and do the right thing, resist temptation and love ye one another. For those who are listening to my voice and, and who, who need to say yes to Christ, those who, who want to be able to say, I repented of my sins, Lord, just come into my life, direct and guide me. You can get in, you know how to get in touch with us at Centenary. But if this church is closer to you, a church where we've got relatives or friends, the pastor and the lay people there would be glad to embrace you and, and, and guide and direct you. We want you to sit in there, but more importantly, we want you to be in a universal family of God, however that's possible. For those who listen to my voice, whether it's during the YouTube section or the glory sighting section, the same thing is possible. We give thanks to God for you. Amen, amen, and amen.